I think most people have been able to join, so um, we shall uh, get started. Thank you very much for joining us um, this morning. Um, we're delighted that you're able to join us virtually for our very first donor thank you event here at the university. Um, for those that don't know you, my name's Claire Tilt um, and I'm the head of alumni and fundraising here at the university. We're really grateful for you all for your support of the university over the last few years. Um, it's really important to us as an institution to have such a generous and supportive group of alumni and friends who help us um, improve student success, um, student opportunity, um, help us with our research and, and some special projects and, and continue to make an impact on the city, the region and the world. Um, we hope you all received your donor thank you package in the post and we're able to save it for um, this morning's event. Um, there might be an opportunity at the end to ask some um, questions and answers. Um, if you want to submit your questions through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, um, and just to let you know that we will be recorded this, um, this session um, to be able to send it out to those that were unable to join us. So just bear that in mind um, in terms of what you put in the, in the Q&A function and that um, you don't want to put anything private or confidential. So I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker um, for this morning's event, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Jeff Layer. Good morning, everybody. And um, thank you for um, being here today. And on behalf of both the university and myself, I'd like to thank you for being you for being a supporter of the university. It's really important to the university and it's important to us, our staff and our students. You know, the university is nearly 200 years old and um, it's founded in 1827 uh, through philanthropic gifts from local factory owners to create the Wolverhampton Mechanics Institute. So our origins go right back to those days and they, they, they're very much part of being you know, a university within a community. The, the original building actually for the Mechanics Institute um, simply cost 200 pounds. Now that was probably quite a sizable sum at that time. And I can assure you that buildings in the university cost a bit more than that these days, um, but it, will have been, it was a significant and major investment at the time. And philanthropy has always played a major part in, in universities and the, the development of institutions. And it covers a number of fields. I mean, we, we are really fortunate in being able to raise around half a million pounds a year um, through philanthropic gifts, through the generosity of donors and partners. And I think that's really important to us and that we say thank you, thank you particularly. Now, donations come in all different sizes and all different shapes, and they go for different things, ranging from student projects, student hardship funding, uh, building projects, uh, particular initiatives, our research, and it goes across the field. So we're able to support the Centre for Sikh and Punjabi Studies, which is a really important community-focused initiative. We're able to do groundbreaking research in, in brain tumours. And, and other areas of cancer research. We, we focus very much on engineering at the heartland of, of the black country with, with our racing team and developing that automotive engineering. And we've got future projects and we're redeveloping the Springfield campus at the moment, which is a major investment into the built environment and the regeneration of our great city. And that they're all key things for the university and the city. We've got developments coming in, in, in creative industries uh, in our business schools. So it's all about how we can take things forward for the benefit of the university community, the civic community, our students, and making sure that they've got the best chance in life and the best start in life. So I'd like to say thank you for all that you've done. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we're going to hear some great examples of, of partnerships that we have with you and some of our other colleagues. So thank you very much for coming today and thank you for what you've done. Thanks, Jeff. Um, one of our greatest supporters is Lord Paul and, and he's unable to be on this call today. Um, well, we hope that he might be on this call today. Um, but he sent us a message um, for us to read um, to you. Um, uh, this, this morning. So this is a message from our Chancellor, Lord Paul of Marylebone. Thank you all for supporting the university over the last few years. 
I'm sorry I can't be there to thank you in person. I am, however, very proud to be the Chancellor of a university that achieved so much and has so many wonderful supporters. I'm delighted to be able to play my part in furthering research, improving our teaching excellence and supporting student entrepreneurship here at the university through the Lord Swage Pool Fund. I've seen firsthand how donations like yours impact and support the university community. Thank you. Finally, I hope we will be able to meet again in person in the not too distant future. I'm certainly looking forward to be able to come to the university again, especially to preside over graduation ceremonies of so many vibrant, dynamic alumni who are ready to take their place in industry. Our next speaker um, or speakers are Claire and Paul Dark. Um, Claire is the mayor of the university, of, of the university of the um, city of Wolverhampton for a couple of days at least. Um, her and her husband both graduated from um, the university. She's councillor for the Park Ward um, and as mayor she was able to select two charities to fundraise for. The, the university had a big impact on her and Paul's life and she contacted us um, to create a scholarship fund for disadvantaged students from the city of Wolverhampton. We're really grateful to Claire and Paul for their support of the university and also the wider population of Wolverhampton and beyond who have supported this initiative. Claire. Thanks Claire and thank you for inviting me to take part in this uh, this event, it's really nice and I'm sorry we couldn't have you all to the mayoral parlour but uh, yes I'm going to talk about um, my journey. Uh, studying at the university changed my life path really I, I was born in the Midlands. My family moved south when my father got a job in London. So I actually grew up in Surrey, in Woking, near Guildford. And I went to the local comprehensive school, but I didn't like school and school didn't like me. And I came out at the end with very few qualifications and I was feeling a bit of a failure, really. And so I didn't get a job. I stayed at home and helped my mother nurse my elderly grandmother. Uh, but later on, I did a string of different jobs, but eventually I trained and qualified as a nurse. And it was at this point I met and married Paul. And uh, we were living in Surrey and we just couldn't afford to buy anywhere to live. So we decided to uh, search around for jobs with accommodation. And uh, we landed some jobs in Wolverhampton and uh, they had uh, accommodation so we moved to Bilston in fact just outside Wolverhampton and uh, fortunately part of my new job was uh, to have some training in-house which led to, led to an access course and eventually to the University of Wolverhampton and it was back in the days when there were student grants and uh, so we both became mature students and uh, I had never considered returning to education uh, as my time at school was not a good experience. And this new venture into university life uh, wasn't easy for me. I found it very challenging. And I remember being completely filled with dread, especially when I found out statistics was a requirement for the first semester. And um, I'd always struggle with numbers and maths. But to my surprise, the woman leading the lectures said that if we stuck to the task and put the time in, she would get us through whatever difficulties we had, they could be overcome. Now, this was a, a really refreshing approach for me uh, from an educator, a positive, supportive, uh, focused on we can do it attitude. And I think that's what really got me through. So studying at the university improved my self-confidence and it opened up all kinds of possibilities and opportunities that I had never previously considered. Studying at the university in the heart of the city enabled me to develop connections within the city and uh, connect with people. It helped me be persuaded to stay and make Wolverhampton my home. It got me involved in local organizations and eventually in local politics and I became a city councillor and eventually I became a city mayor and it, it is my role as a city mayor um, we saw because uh, Paul was my consort um, my sidekick in in the role we saw the opportunity 
to support local young people and celebrate our university. And so we, we work together creating the Mayoral Scholarship Fund at the University of Wolverhampton, aimed to support local students from disadvantaged backgrounds to go to the University of Wolverhampton, giving support for students to achieve and fulfill their potential. My work as a city councillor and the other work we've done in the city has given us greater in, insight and awareness to the barriers and obstacles, yet opportunities for one person can create success and benefit to everyone in our city. And we hope that the scholarship will be able to enable people from disadvantaged backgrounds to thrive at the University of Wolverhampton. And we hope that it helps move away from that idea that universities are for elite students to attend Oxford and Cambridge. Local people attending the University of Wolverhampton creates greater links and connections between the University of Wolverhampton and the local community of Wolverhampton for the benefit of all in our city, the heart of our city, driving growth and prosperity. We hope that the future mayors will continue to promote this scholarship, and I'm looking forward to seeing the first scholarships awarded post-pandemic. So I thank everybody who's donated and supported this uh, venture, and I thank the university and especially the alumni team for their support in making all this happen. And it's great that we've been able to get together on this event, even if it is virtually. So thank you very much. Thanks, Claire, and, and thank you both um, for your support, both um, through the scholarship, but also in the many events that you've attended over the past um, couple of years of your mayor, mayoral term. Um, next up, uh, technology, uh, hopefully working. We have a video from um, Mary and Gary Ralphus. Mary and Gary are the daughter and son-in-law of the late Joan Argyle Schamburg. Joan grew up in Wolverhampton um, and emigrated to America just after World War II. Um, she always wanted to be a nurse, but the um, situation was that, that she never was able to fulfill her dream. However, through her legacy gift, um, they now are able to support um, nursing students at the University of Wolverhampton. So we've got a short video just to play for you now. Every child dreams about what they're going to be when they grow up, and Joan was no different. Raised in Wolverhampton as one of six children in a poor family, life circumstances dictated her path. She held a series of jobs, Cordalls, Midland Metal, the Gaumont Theater, and finally a stint in Milan Girls before immigrating to America to marry her U.S. Army soldier husband. Joan carried a dream throughout her life that she mentioned frequently to her family. She'd always wanted to be a nurse, but her family couldn't afford to send her to school. Joan returned to Wolverhampton one last time in 2014, her hometown, the city that she loved. After her death, there was only one place to honor her legacy, the University of Wolverhampton. With this modest bursary, we hope you are able to chase the dreams that she never could. Jane's bursary supports student nurses to travel overseas and expands their knowledge and great um, practice within the sector. We're also really delighted that this year that they've increased their support to fund nursing badges and nursing ceremonies here at the university. We wanted you to hear from some of the students that have benefited from your support and I'm delighted to introduce Iman Hussein. Iman, while he was a student here, was the recipient of the Richardson Brothers Scholarship. He's both an undergraduate and postgraduate alumnus of ours in computer science and was a student here when we received the scholarship. He will graduate officially in September 2021. Iman. Hi there, good to see you all. So for me, a university isn't just a learning institute. It's always been a centre of excellence and a beacon of opportunity, a place to gather all the greatness that we have here in the West Midlands and the UK and show off to the world. And Wolverhampton is no exception. 
Every gift from you guys and our sponsors has been so beneficial, and I probably wouldn't be here without them in my position. <laughs> Wolverhampton specifically called out to me. I've always been, or I've always found traditional academics a little bit tricky. I wasn't quite the same as all the other students, and it wasn't clear until much later on why. Wolverhampton had a completely different way of doing things, a more holistic and well-rounded approach that valued everyone's unique inputs and experience. I was given the freedom to explore and learn about any sort of technology I was interested in, which is really important when it comes to IT when there are so many new fields to go into. And together with support from my tutors and from you guys, our sponsors and the Richardsons, I was able to really make a difference. Now, I won the Richardsons bursary all the way back in October 2020. So it's almost like a different world back then, but it was fantastic. It felt amazing, not just to have the backing of such a world-renowned university, but also such a large philanthropic company in the West Midlands region. And it really was a vote of confidence in both what I was studying and the direction that I was going into. Since then, I've been able to contribute to loads of really big projects in the name of Wolverhampton and with the Richardsons behind me. One of them included the AWS machine vision tool that I built as part of a hackathon with a company called Capgemini. This allowed blind people and people with vision impairments to read whiteboards and to read handwritten notes by converting that text into text that's readable in Word. From there, I continued on with my charitable work with the National Museum of Computing over at Bletchley Park. I was able to help other students just like me with learning difficulties and autism, ADD and ADHD learn all about the world of cryptography and all the super secret spy stuff that people do at Bletchley Park and GCHQ. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without the monetary support and the support available to me at both Wolverhampton and with the Richardsons. From there, and probably my biggest achievement so far, I was able to collect a crack team of individuals from the University of Wolverhampton. And we entered something called the Call for Code, which is an IBM global hackathon. Last year, there was a global pandemic, and it's no secret that there was a shortage of food and supplies. The world's logistical systems had started to break down, and our project, as our team, was to use something called the blockchain, which is a shared ledger, a shared list of supplies and ideas. And we were able to use that to help redistribute food. We worked with local companies like Tony's Delicatessen in Wolverhampton, as well as the Redditch Food Bank to help redistribute supplies to the people that needed them. And we got a podium finish with the call for code. Hillary Clinton's daughter, a lady called Chelsea Clinton, quite famous in her own right, said the words Wolverhampton online on a live stream with millions of viewers that really put us on the map. And it was incredible to feel that a team from the University of Wolverhampton with backing from small local companies as well as the Richardsons had achieved something so great. We were right up there with Ivy League universities in America as well as global institutions like Oxford and Cambridge. It really was incredible. And that all accumulates to where I am now. At the moment, I'm working with a company called the NAQTS, the National Air Quality Testing Services. I've moved up a little bit north and what we do is we use technology, sensors, and smart learning systems to understand all about the air around us. And that's super useful in the world we live in. With both a pandemic and rising CO2 levels, industrial urban city centers with lots of people and schools with tenuous environments, this technology is really going to help to solve the problems of the future, as well as the problems we have now. And that's really what technology is all about. And I could only get here with help from the University of Wolverhampton, such a forward thinking organization, as well as the Richardson's Brothers Foundation, who charitably gave me their bursary, which really helped smooth things over and gave me the confidence and the economical means to pursue the path I wanted to go through. It's really been a dream and it's been so cool being able to work with you guys and to build something so amazing these past few years. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Iman, and, and thanks for sharing some of the work that you've done, particularly to um, contribute to the society in which, to which we live in. And thank you to the Richardson Foundation for their support as well. Next up, we've got a lady called Adidapo Fasenro. Adi is also an alumnus of ours, and she studied a BEng in civil and transportation engineering. She's a recent donor and wanted to set up a graduation prize to acknowledge the highest achieving female graduate in civil engineering. Adi will get to meet her prize winner in the graduation ceremonies taking place in September. Adi. 
Thank you, Claire. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Adi, and I graduated two years ago. Um, I studied civil and transportation engineering. Um, after I graduated, I got a job, and currently I'm now a highways engineer. However, when I entered work, I realized there's not that many women engineers in the industry, and that was also a reflection of my course as well. So I decided, okay, let me set up a prize for the best performing female engineer that does civil engineering. Um, my aim in that was to encourage women that joined my course to keep on going and that a woman before them in the same university did it and they can also do it too. And I also feel like with this prize, that will also encourage them to uplift other women to take on engineering as well. So yes, I'm really excited to see them um, when we have the chance to see in person. Thank you. Thanks, Addy. Um, next up, we have a, another student um, who's kindly joined us today, Laura Thompson. Laura is the recipient of the FBC Mandley Bowdler Women in Engineering Prize Scholarship. Um, she's a current student of ours. She's studying a BN in Mechanical Engineering based at our School of Engineering over in Telford. Telford. Laura is also a participant of the University of Wolverhampton Racing Project, and we're very grateful that FBC Mandley Bowdler also sponsor that as well. Laura. Hi everyone, um, thank you for being here today. Uh, so my story basically, before I started university, I used to work in retail um, and I was never happy, I never wanted to do that. And I had a passion for engineering. So um, I had a look at what I wanted to do and jobs I wanted to get. And so I decided to join the University of Wolverhampton. Um, just basically to be able to make this career for myself and I chose mechanical engineering because I enjoy so many areas of it. I enjoyed motorsport, automotive and aerospace and um, I received the scholarship based on my academic achievements which I put a lot of work in for because I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Um, so the money that I'll get from this um, is going to go towards the racing team mostly to be able to get me to all the different races and um, just for travel and expenses and things but I hope to put it towards my studies as well and um, yeah so since starting university um, I being originally undecided on exactly which area I wanted to go into um, I always knew I wanted to join the team that was one big reason that I, I decided to come to the University of Wolverhampton so since joining it I've loved every minute and um, it's made me want to achieve the job in um, Formula One hopefully. Um, I'm still looking at the other areas but I think that that's it's helped me really decide what I want to do and um, yeah so um, with the effort that I've put in and being able to achieve the scholarship it's really given me the determination to carry on and achieve more and it's, um, it's given me a really uh, big boost to know that that's been recognized by someone and that they, they're, spot, you know, they're supporting me for the efforts that I've put in. So I just wanted to say a really big thank you to um, FBC Mandy Bowdler for that support that you've given, not just for me, but for the, the entire university and for the other students there as well. So thank you. Thanks, Laura. And Laura was um, away with the racing team this weekend in the F3 oh, was, yeah. Silverstone. <laughs> and how did we get on, Laura? <laughs> We got a first and two seconds, so we're so pleased. <laughs> that's brilliant. We're, After um, a, a year of no racing, that's got to be a real boost for you guys yeah. who, who run that team and, and for Shane and the rest of the, the racing team. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're in uh, first at the minute for the championship. So fingers yeah. crossed we can hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And on all weathers, I understand at Silverstone, typically a British yeah. <laughs> May weekend. Yeah, the... Um, the one race it was quite sunny and then like five minutes before we went out it just started pouring it down with rain so it was a very quick change to get on the track but no we're all so pleased <laughs> brilliant and thanks for joining us today it's really appreciated thank you now a number of you on this call very kindly supported our COVID-19 campaign that we ran um, last year 
This formed uh, part of a wider campaign that the university undertook to support um, the COVID-19 pandemic. This support was led up by our Pro Vice Chancellor of Regional Engagement, Nazira Karadia. She's joined us on the call today um, to talk a bit about how we responded to the pandemic as a university and um, how your support um, impacted the region. Nazira. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Claire, uh, for the introduction. Um, during the pandemic, and uh, especially during the beginning of that emergency, the university substantially increased its engagement with key partners, especially the partners in health and social care. And this is so that we could provide them with the information on the support available from the university uh, for COVID-19, as well as to offer our expertise and our resources. This included uh, supplying PPE from our stocks, as well as uh, getting our staff together, our chemists and our chemical engineers together to manufacture sanitizers. Our engineering staff um, manufactured uh, the, the face shields and uh, amongst uh, the, the equipment that we loaned to uh, laboratories uh, nationally, one particular instrument we loaned is from our research lab and that's the PCR machine. That was really important at the time when the government was setting up these very specialized um, uh, research uh, uh, labs uh, as well labs for rapid screening. This particular instrument is, uh, is a very reliable uh, instrument and it can detect uh, genetic material, for example, from the coronavirus at the time of the test, but it can also say whether you have got the virus and uh, whether you have had the virus. So very sensitive um, uh, screening and very high uh, rapid uh, testing as well. During the pandemic, uh, we also facilitated the rapid deployment of our nursing students and our paramedic students. And so thank you to those over 600 students that went out to support uh, frontline staff in, in the NHS and, uh, and other places. Thanks as well to our fundraising uh, campaign and, uh, and to you, our donors. Through that campaign, we distributed over 10,000 face shields throughout uh, Wolverhampton, Walsall and Telford. And we did this by liaising closely and working with those councils so that we could ensure that uh, the key workers could be protected during that first and second wave of the emergency. So we recognize the impact of philanthropy uh, and what it, it does for our students, uh, for our research, as well as our community and our society. And therefore, building and maintaining these very strong links with our graduates, uh, our friends and supporters of the University of Wolverhampton is central to our regional engagement strategy. And so we'd like to thank you uh, for your support and for being our friend. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Nazira, and, it, and it's great to see you all interacting via the chat function today as well. Hopefully next time we do this, we'll be able to meet uh, for a real cup of coffee and a real uh, brownie in person. Next up, I'd like to introduce Dr. Shatia Sharma, MBE, DL. He's a retired general me medicine practitioner and he's the current president of the Black Country Division of the British Medical Association. He's president of the Red Cross in the West Midlands and fellow of the British International Doctors Association. He's also an ambassador for organ donation in all sections of society in the West Midlands and is a great supporter of the university. Satya. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. And I must say that this university, which has been in existence for about 200 years, I've only known it for about 45 years. And out of that, intimately for about 10, 12 years, and it was my loss that I didn't know the university that well in the first 33 years of my residence in Wolverhampton. But the last 10, 12 years that I've been associated with the university, it has filled me with a sense of pride and joy because the work that university is doing is absolutely phenomenal. And I remember meeting the dynamic vice chancellor, Jeff, who said, if there's anything to do with life, we teach it in the university. 
Now that's not that's not the sort of thing that all the universities can say, but it's wonderful that you are able to have a total dynamic approach for all walks of life. And I'm also pleased to see that uh, uh, the university has been in forefront of doing the right thing at the right time. One classical example was PPE. We, you heard the details about the machine just now from Nazira, but the PPE uh, collection was really important at that time when there was shortage of PPE. Interestingly, not only were the people approached for giving donation to the project, they were also asked if you know where there is a shortage, let us know. And uh, it was good to contribute to that situation where I went around to the dentists and doctors asking them if they really needed, and they benefited from uh, this immensely. My own passion is about organ donation, and I'm very pleased and proud again to say that university has been in forefront of developing models for organ donation. It is one university where um, it has got a sustainable way of um, spreading the message in the sections of society where the young people don't particularly want to know about organ donation, but this university has done a lot. It has had the competition for producing some, um, some thank you cards. It has had the competition for producing the charts and the mayoral suite a few years ago welcomed the students. In addition to that, the university has recently been, been involved in a community investment scheme for organ donation. And I'm so pleased to see that it has been successful in getting the bid. But more important than bid is the work that will be done in the universe by the university to spread the message in various communities, which are rather disadvantaged. So in addition to thank you event, I'd like to say it has been a story of success, but I'd like to uh, wish more success in the future, achieving greater heights. Well done to University of Wolverhampton. Well done to the teams. An absolutely wonderful situation where everybody has chipped in to be able to pull the car together and faster, keep it up. Thank you. Now we've heard from some of our donors and we've heard from, from our students who've been supported by um, some of the gifts that have made an impact on their lives. We'd now like to give you the opportunity to hear from three of our academics um, whose work your support really does help. First of all, I'd like to introduce Dr. Apindajit Takar, who's heads up our Sikh and Punjabi centres, Apindajit. Thank you, Claire. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, your support for the Centre for Sikh and Punjabi Studies is highly appreciated. Um, and thank you, Dr. Sathya Sharma, for your support and encouragement, particularly in support of our application for the organ donation project. It's great to see that both Lord Rami Ranger and Dr. Sadhu Singh have joined us today, both of whom have generously donated to the centre. So thank you both for everything you do constantly to motivate us in the centre with your passion and your energy. From an academic perspective, the work we are doing with our local, national and international Sikh and Punjabi community is very important since it's important to have research-based approaches to many of the anecdotal issues and challenges we want to address and discuss through the centre. Therefore, the centre, as well as the university overall, places this emphasis on impactful research so that it relates to and matters to the communities around which it is focused. And having a voice in the community is therefore something which we deeply appreciate thanks to your support for the centre's development and therefore the university's outreach into the community. Thanks to the interest you have shown in the Centre for Sikh and Punjabi Studies, we have been active in organising a number of very well attended events which have community at their focus, including a grand celebration to mark the 550th birth anniversary of the first Guru of the Sikhs, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Therefore, you are key stakeholders in the work that we have done and continue to do. The Centre for Sikh and Punjabi Studies is a grateful recipient for the promises you have made to us, which have enabled us to have the impact at regional, national and international levels. We have a number of plans for the forthcoming academic year, including a number of exciting projects, which we will update you on as we make progress with their planning and preparation. 
So once again, thank you for your continued support and a huge thank you. Thanks, Apindajit. Um, next up is our head of our School of Engineering, uh, Saeed Hassan. Um, Saeed, obviously we were really successful uh, this weekend in Silverstone, but um, can you let us know a little bit more about how um, the general support of people um, impact on, on the work that you do in the school? Oh, thank God. Yes, I think all my statements were taken up by others, so I cannot repeat what Laura and you have said it. Uh, I was going to go with a bang. Yes, here we go, so that we are the top of the championship and once again, and we will maintain it. Uh, good to see, I think, all the familiar friends on the call and those of you who don't know me, I think Saeed Hassan, uh, certainly uh, you donate and I spend and uh, you can poke me with the questions. Uh, it's, it's a great vision, uh, I think, uh, which we I saw at the university when I joined them five years ago, that <clears throat> something that we wanted to create uniqueness, uh, give uh, some student-centered focus uh, experience. And that's not anywhere else. I think I've been around a few institutions and been the sector for about 40 years. And that approach wasn't there. I was suspicious about it, how, how we will manage. But once I dived into it, I saw the potential. I saw that how beneficial it is. And then my biggest worry was that how we I'm going to finance it with the limited resources uh, Vice Chancellors gave me to run the school. And then came across Claire and her team. And we sat down and said that, how about approaching our alumnus and approaching us. If you don't ask, you don't get. So that was our philosophy. And, and to my delight, I think uh, engagement for alumni and alike in terms is tremendous. Wherever we went, I can see Dr. Hallmark is here. I can see Ben Tao is here. And, and I think people like those are that who have really come out and they have supported us. That journey of student experience has translated in terms of students gain the employment with the biggest and, and the best possible employer, employers. SME, I think that's what the West Midland is all about, is flooded with our students. They are in high demand. Students are working with Mercedes, with uh, Red Bull, with Williams, with Aston Martin. And we have changed the landscape. And I am now getting questions, broadening questions from other institutions, how you manage that, how you do it. So it's just the start of the journey, but we are not uh, sitting still. I think uh, with a great team behind us, we are moving from thing to thing and while we were doing Formula Student and F3, now we got a great partnership with Morgan Motors. We got a great partnership with Bentley. You can see behind me, there's a lot of space available for the stickers to go on. So we, we have a, a great facility at Telford that where we are giving the real life uh, experience to our students. You can ask Laura, how was the weekend? must be wet, but we came back winner. They are professionals. These students, when they are at the job, they are no let off. They are really, really hungry lions. I call them, they are my tigers and tigresses, and they go out to win it. And that is with all your help. I couldn't thank you you more for your great support. And I hope that continues. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Syed. Finally, um, I wanted to ask Tracy War to introduce herself and talk a little bit about um, the impact of philanthropy on the work that she does here at the university. Tracy. Thanks, Claire. So I'm Professor Tracy War. I'm uh, I lead a team of scientists at the University of Wolverhampton across a number of medical disciplines. And we collaborate extensively with clinical colleagues outside the university to try and develop new effective treatments for malignant brain tumours. 
So all medical research is expensive, um, but, but brain tumours in particular, they are probably the most complex type um, of cancer. And the underlying mutations that, that um, cause the tumour to grow and to spread and to develop resistance to therapies um, is, is much greater, that di genetic mutation diversity than, than in other types of cancer. And that's between patients with the same tumour and even within um, a singular tumour. So it becomes very difficult to, to actually conduct that research. And we've been helped by two very important groups of um, that ha have we've benefited from their generosity. And firstly, that's the patients with brain tumors who very generously donate their tumor tissue after surgical re um, removal of their tumor and allow us to use that in, in our research with, with, our, with um, their consent. And then also uh, you out there that have so generously donated um, to our research program that has allowed us to really do um, cutting edge genetic fingerprinting and identify new druggable targets. We've been able to bring some of those into preclinical models and test them. And it's really having that flexibility to respond to opportunities, whether that, that's to be able to use the, the, the latest cutting edge technology. Desira referred to the QPCR machine, and that was funded through a number of um, char charitable donations um, many years ago. It's been an absolute workhorse for not only the genetic analysis of brain tumours over the last few years, but also other diseases that are that are investigated at the university. And we've just received it um, back from the Elderly Edge Lighthouse Laboratories, where it was used 24-7 for COVID testing. So they even gave us a little, little brass plaque to thank us for, uh, for it. Um, and, and, and all of my researchers were, were very glad to have it back. Um, very grateful that it, that it was served a purpose for the COVID um, um, appeal, but, but also very, very glad to have it back uh, for our, our, our genetic analysis. So we've been able to, to react quickly to um, some pharmaceutical companies, um, some collaborators in academic institutions in the UK and abroad, particularly when they've developed new potential compounds to treat brain tumours, and we've been able to test them in our, in our clinical uh, models, and that we've had some really exciting and promising results with that. The other thing that I would mention, mention it is that many of our donors, um, either as organisations or individuals, have been impacted in some way by the diagnosis of a brain tumour in a family member or friend. And actually then we very much have appreciated the time that donors have, have spent coming into the laboratories to see our facilities and the research we're doing, but more importantly, to talk to the research scientists about the impact um, that this diagnosis um, has had on them. And that has inspired particularly our, our younger um, researchers, our PhD students, which is funded through some of these, um, these donations. And it really inspired them to see what difference their research can make in, in treating um, individuals in the future. We have an exciting program um, continuing to develop um, these, these new therapies, particularly metabolic therapies around potentially um, ketogenic diets, making a ketogenic diet in a pill, if you, if you like, and also really engaging with some, uh, some of our colleagues in other areas of the university in artificial intelligence and, and machine learning to improve diagnosis um, of patients. So thank you very much from everyone that is working um, in the brain tumour field at the University of Wolverhampton. Thanks, Tracy. Um, that comes to the end of our kind of formal uh, part of the morning. Um, and uh, there's an opportunity for you to ask any questions or um, clarity of anything that we've been said or, or, or um, anything this morning. Um, we do have one in the chat. Um, Jeff, this is probably one for you um, from Adrian Hallmark, who's an alumnus of ours and um, heads up Bentley. Um, he wants to know how Brexit and COVID may have impacted intake profile and what changes we've had to make as a consequence. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was a bit slow to unmute there. Hi, Adrian, I hope you're well. Um, it, it's 
both COVID and, and Brexit, well, COVID more, more importantly, had a, a significant impact on, on um, the intake of students, but not necessarily in terms of the balance of who our students are, more about how we were able to help them start their courses and also um, a greater number of students starting um, later in, in the year, January, February, for example. What we have seen um, quite significantly is a, a move in our students from you know, being in the classroom to a combination of um, being online, being in the classroom. Um, and that's had you know, challenges for, for students and staff. Uh, particularly when you have to socially distance um, and, and create that space. So, but we've managed that. Students have been brilliant. One of the things that's really interesting, though, uh, is the demand for the coming year. We have seen a really, really significant increase in demand for those what we call key worker courses. So applications for nursing, teacher training, social work, paramedic, science, all the health areas, pharmacy in particular, uh, applications have significantly increased, demonstrating a sort of people value those occupations in a, in a different way post the pandemic, or as we come out of the pandemic, I hope, um, to, to how they saw it before. So it, it will lead to a change, um, but it's, it, yeah, at this stage, we're still working it through. Thanks, Jeff. Um, there don't seem to be any other questions and answers in the Q&A function. Um, so all that's left for me is, is to say thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for your support. It impacts our students. It impacts our research. It's enabled um, things like our Springfield campus um, to uh, develop. Um, and uh, we really are grateful for, for, for your support. Um, thank you to the panellists and the people that have spoke today. Um, you know, I think our students have been fantastic and it's been really interesting to hear on, on people's personal journeys of, of why they wanted to support the university and what it means to them. We hope that when we re uh, run this event next year, we'll be able to see you on campus um, and we'll be able to thank you in, in person instead of through boxes, which will be a light relief to some of us who've spent the last few months and, and actually over a year speaking through boxes. So thank you very, very much for your continued support of the university. And um, we look forward to seeing you on campus in person very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.